Okay, boys and girls, we are still on seven, or chapter seven, lesson nine. On this one that we're working on, we're going to work on word problems and thinking through them. Okay, it's really important to think through and figure out what the question's asking. So we're gonna go over some strategies to do that, okay? So this problem says, in fourth grade, there are 100 students, 16 of them are left-handed. It wants to know what decimal of students are left-handed? Well, if I look up here, there are 16 that are left-handed. So that means 16 out of how many students are left-handed? Oh, if I look up there, I can see it. 100. So here's my fraction. I have 16 one hundredths. I need to turn it to its decimal form because it wants the decimal of students. So my first step is to write the fraction, to figure out the fraction. The next step after that is to create it in decimal form. I know this is the hundredth, so it goes tenths, hundredths. And then I take the digits on top and make sure one's on each line, which then gives me sixteen hundredths in decimal form. This next one wants to know how many students are right-handed. Did the problem say it up above? No, it didn't, but can we use the information that we have to figure it out? Yeah, we can. We know there are 100 students. 16 of them are left-handed. How would we figure out the other part, how many are right-handed? If you thought subtraction, you thought correct. We do 100 minus 16, and that would give us 84. Okay, so there are 84 students that are right-handed. Can we now create this into a fraction? Yes, so we do 84 over 100 because there's 84 students out of 100 students that are right-handed. I can now turn this into a decimal. I know I'm in the hundreds place, so I go tenths, hundreds, take these digits and write them on top from the numerator. And now I have my fraction, or my decimal, 84 hundredths. And even better is if you wrote out the units. Okay, so let's try another one. Try this one on your own, it's the same concept. Okay, try it on your own, pause the video. If you want, um, you could pause the video for the first one, see if you did it right, then pause the video for the next one, see if you did it right, okay? So, the question says, there are 10 people at the store, five of them are adults. What decimal number shows the fraction of people who were adults? Well, I look into the problem, I can see 10 people were at the store. Five of them were adults. That's the information I need to solve this one. So there were 10 total people. Because that tells me my whole, I put that in the denominator. I'm looking at five of them right now because five of them were adults. So I need to turn this into a decimal. I put my decimal point, I'm in the tenths place, so I put a line. I bring the numerator over, put it on top. So I have the decimal 5 tenths right here. Now I want to know the fraction of the people who were children. Does the problem say that up there? No, it doesn't, but I can use the information to figure it out. Remember, if you broke it up, make sure to pause it, don't keep going, solve it, and then return the video on. Okay, so I can use this information to figure out. There were 10 total people. Five of them were adults. How do I figure out how many were children? What operation am I gonna use? If you thought subtraction, you thought correct. 10 minus five, because I wanna figure out how many people are left that would be the other part. And I would find out that it's five. So I have five tenths of the people in the store that were children. So once again, I make my decimal point, put it at the tenths place because I'm in the tenths. You can see that because it says 10 in the denominator. 
bring over my digit, my, my numerator, and I get my new fraction of 5 tenths. Okay, let's look at another problem. If you had 36 cents out of a dollar, what is the decimal number that represents the fraction of money? Well, I have 36 cents out of a dollar. How many cents are in a dollar? Remember, cents are the same thing as pennies. How many pennies are in a dollar? If you said 100, you were correct. There's 100 total pennies in the dollar. I have 36 cents of them. It wants to know what's the decimal for, for the fraction of the money that I have. So I have 36 hundredths. I need to change this to decimal. So this is the hundredths place, so I put point, and then tenth, hundredth. I take each one of these digits in, and I put them on one point each. So I have 36 hundredths, okay? Which is then just this. You got it, okay? And remember, I've been forgetting to do it, but you can put the units, 36 cents. Okay, if you had 55 cents, what is the decimal for the fraction representing how many more cents you need to get to a dollar? So I would do, it. so in it, it says I have 55 cents. That's what I have. It wants to know how many more cents you need to get to a dollar. Do I know that amount? I know I have 55, but do I know how many cents I need to get up to the full 100? I don't, so I have to figure it out. Remember, there's 100 cents and a dollar. I have 55 of them. How would I figure out the missing amount? I'd use subtraction. So if I subtracted 55 from 100, I would get 45 cents. So that means I need 45 out of the 100 cents to have the full dollar. So I turn that into a decimal, put my decimal point, I'm in the hundredths place, so it goes tenths, hundredths, bring this 45 over, making sure one's on each, and now I have my decimal, 0.45, okay? Um, that, I just want to do one more with you, and it's, um, let me write it out real fast. It would be, um, East Lake is holding a fund raiser. 100 students have donated seven, sorry, I forgot my decimal, or not my decimal, my period, um, seven students donated over $50. What is the decimal number that would represent the fraction of students who who gave more than $50. Okay, so let's look at what's important in here. I have there were 100 students that donated. Seven students donated over $50. What is the decimal number that would represent the fraction of students who gave more than $50? Well, I know 100 students donated, so that's my dollar denominator. That is um, how many total students in the whole there were. Seven 
nine of them donated over 50. That's my numerator. That's the part that I'm talking about or focusing on. So if I was to change this, I'd see I have this tens, hundreds, and I would need to fill it in. Remember, if I wrote it this way, it is not right. That's 70 out of 100. It would need to be, I need to remember there's an invisible serial row here, 0, 7. Or I could have seen there were two zeros. So that means I write the number that's in the numerator and where the decimal point would naturally have been if that was a whole number. Then I move forward one, two spaces. The decimal point's no longer here, it's right here. And I fill in the missing space. So I have my decimal point zero seven or seven hundredths. Remember, this is not the same as seven hundredths. That's the same as seven tenths if I got rid of that decimal point. And 7 tenths, if I turned it into a fraction by multiplying it, by finding an equivalent fraction, it would get 70 one hundredths. And that's not what it was asking for. It was asking for 7. So you have to remember, put the 0 in front of the 7 to get the right answer. Okay? And that's only when you have a single digit when it's in the hundredths. Thanks, guys, for watching. Bye.